I swear you're an alien. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, bit of an in-joke there. Right, welcome everybody to tonight's live stream on the Truth Proof uh, YouTube channel. Uh, welcome, Paul. Yeah, thanks a lot, Liz, and uh, Sunday, and we've got a, well, a, a day off as well tomorrow, so how good is that? Yeah. And I hope, hope everybody's well. And, uh, Happy hope Easter to everybody out there. Not been having too much uh, chocolate and uh, beer, I hope. I'm, I'm having none today. I'm just having a cup of tea. And so thanks, good, yeah, and thanks, Alison, for doing and moderating tonight. Thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's, that's great. So uh, it's been a busy week. I've been gathering lots of, not lots, so that's a bit of a top, but I've been, quite a few reports that I've been putting together and I've spent a lot of time early mornings with little dog. Got him a GoPro. So, ah, interesting. Uh, so yeah. yeah, we've had a bit of a going on. We, I got him a little harness thing. I don't know whether they're designed for little dogs. It's To him, that GoPro is probably like one of them donkeys that's got like <laughs> packs of bricks either side of it. But uh, I've, yeah. I've now got him a little jacket that I think is going to work. So that should be quite fun. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, let's have a look then. We're going to thank everybody for coming on tonight's stream. And uh, looks like there's quite a few in, Paul. I don't know if you want to give any name checks out. Well, I, as usual, I can just see a few names, but Steve T's, I see Lee's in, Rivington Pike, it is Matthew, Barbara, G Dog, Sober Carper, Rebecca King, I Rebecca, Cal. Seveled and we got Carl Danning, but I can't see his name, but I did see him early. I know Linny's in and, and Mrs. Linny and Patrick Daniel. Still got to speak to you, Patrick, uh, next couple of days if you've got time. TA, Drew Hollings. It's great. I honestly, disabled yeah. Welshman, Steph. Steph, yeah. uh, And I know there's people there that I can't see, so apologies. Tom and, Waters I've seen and Steve Trees and Billy GW, uh, Patrick Daniel. And um, gee, what was that one? Gee, Michael Webster, Simon Riley, Kevin Evers. Oh, Kev, wow. nice to see you, mate. Yeah, yeah, um, well, yeah, the great support tonight, and thank you for coming on and uh, just making a show for me and Paul. Otherwise, we'd be talking to ourselves, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, and Thunder 65. Yeah, so we know it's questions based this one tonight. So if you've got Definitely. anything you want to kick about, and it, you can put it to the people in chat as well, just put it in capital letters for us, please. And, and we'll, uh, we're will we not going to give you the, a definitive answer, but to, you'll get our views on, on what it is or what you want to yeah, share. Yeah. Or, yeah. And brilliant, Bobby Wolf will be live. <laughs> he will be live, yeah. He, he weren't alive other day, bless him, because we jumped in, we went up early morning. Um, oh, just I think Thursday morning. Yeah. Oh about half past four or five o'clock. And as we're coming out, I were ready to go home. But he dropped down into Dyke, jumped down. He got It's quite oh. steep, as you'll see on a bit of film. So yeah. I'd already said I'd done this bit of film and I said I'm heading back now. But I thought, nah, I fancy going into it. There's nobody about. It's really early. It's still, I don't know, between six and seven at this time. So I climbed down into Dyke and we walked along it into in, be, in bed of it i'd never been in this part because it's the steepest part and i just think yeah. we sludge in it you know at the yeah. sides yeah so it's a limestone and gravel in bottom so that's pretty dry but there's a log jam and i thought well how am i going to get out of it now how are they expecting to walk out <laughs> near sea so i climbed up it as you're going to see a little bit of film we'll put out it next week or so because i've done a few and little dog follows me and it jumps down onto a log that's slippy and there's still about four foot drop and bang, banged his head. So oh. I, 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 I think I pushed him a little bit too hard. I didn't, you know what I mean? I, or he were a bit too willing. So anyway, we walked a bit further. Then there's another log jam. So we made his way up and we went out. But uh, interesting morning. And we've had some interesting mornings in there, to be honest. We're starting from darkness to light. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and he's only got little legs, hasn't he? So it's... Uh, yeah, I have. Be, I've only got little, you've only got little legs, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, yeah. And then I met a guy, we've, we've been up on Clifftops quite a bit this week and, uh, you know, Pete's been up and yeah. Yeah. and Linny. At one point, I think it was Wednesday, 12 people were up on Clifftops with us, all unannounced. Uh, we, we, there were six of us at regular, but then another six just appeared, uh, you know, at, at different intervals, all looking for the same thing. And uh, some of them, or two of them, uh, 
they they were looking for some green lights that somebody had told them about. Nothing to do with anything from us. Uh -huh. Yeah, so 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 that were interesting, you know. And we got a, I got an account off a guy who started telling me it or telling us it in the dark about yeah. something at Rudston Monolith when he's flying a drone and his drone got knocked out at sky. And I thought, I've heard this before. And I, I it's pitch black, remember, we're on cliff tops. I said, I said, I said, sorry to butt in here, but I've heard this story before. He says, Are you Paul? I said, Yeah. He says, I emailed you, you know, a couple of years ago with this. And then I, I kind of decided I didn't want to talk about it, but he shared a little bit of it. And hopefully he's going to get in contact and I'll be able to fill you in on details uh, yeah. of it. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been interesting. But I've got a little uh, topic talking point. And yeah. I've been looking at this um, recent picture that's came came out in the press of the Loch Ness Monster. So I don't know if people have seen it, but if you want to Google it, if you haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, and give us um, and give us uh, your thoughts on it. Now, I think this lady submitted the picture, but she's been holding on to this picture for a little while. I can't remember. People in the chat will probably uh, tell me how long she'd held on to this photo. But the photo itself, it is a close-up. Well, there is a close-up that I've seen in the press. There might be a wider shot, but it does look interesting. But it got uh, me and you talking, didn't it, Paul, about sea monsters and things mm. like that. And I think you came up uh, and found a report oh, from, was it the early, early century of, uh, the, was it the Farley? Was it the, the, there's, there's 19, before the, the, I think it was 1934. I know there's been, I mean, we need a lot less monster expert on. We had one once, didn't we? I can't remember yeah. the guy's name. Yeah. But the, the, the picture that sort of made the headlines in the 1930s, and I think it was 1934 at Loch Ness, just a few months before, a coast guard at Filey made the papers and claimed that he'd seen a sea, not a sea serpent, because if you imagine a sea serpent has not yeah. having legs, this thing had yeah. got legs. I think it were four, four legs, stumpy legs, yeah. as he said, a huge long neck with a head like a horse and huge glowing eyes. And he said he'd seen it on the beach at Filey, uh, in, in the Filey Bay. What I find interesting about that one, though, is yeah. if if... If, if if that one was after the Loch Ness one, you'd think, oh, somebody's just cashing in and wanting a little bit of fame. Yeah. But this one would be for the Loch Ness one. So, you know, so found that mm -hmm. one interesting. And I know it was 1934 and just a few months before. Then I think in 1934, there were ones sighted in the mouth of the Humber. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention that one, Paul. Uh, and that was the round about the same year, was it? Yeah, yeah, 34, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, the, the, then I think in 2018, and I've got the pictures to this, and the, I've spoke to the guy several times. Uh, there's a guy at Far Grange in between uh, Skirlington. If it, people, I know you people won't know it, but you've, in between Hornsey and Bridlington, there's a caravan park called Far Grange. All caravans on sea, edge at sea, and this guy sat there with his grandkids on the beach. There's another couple again him. And this thing comes up out at sea, and he took pictures of it. And it, it's a weirdest thing, and I've got the pictures. You'd think it were a big uh, dog covered in shaggy hair, to be honest with you. It's hard to say how far it stuck out at sea. He says it, it was stuck out at sea about, about four foot. Yeah. And then it went back down, and then it come back up again. And he took the pictures. This guy lives in Leeds, and... Uh, I contacted him late last year to see if I could have another word and meet him up there when summer season, when caravan season starts, which is now. So I shall be reigniting that one and seeing whether I can get a little bit more out of him. He's got the photographs. I've so, got the photographs. Yeah. So these photographs, has he not gone to the press with them? Uh, no, I'm nowhere with them. There's only me. There's only yeah. me ever looked at them. And I've been sat on them now for two or three years. Well, uh, because, yeah. Well, uh, they are. Yeah, there you are, Truth Proofers. That'll be another exclusive on Truth Proof. Where, well, uh, if we can get these pictures. Uh, I've, got Les, I've got the pictures. Yeah. But as with a lot of these things, people sort of come at you with a story and it's it's this is entirely their right to do, but then they just fall off map. They just disappear. Yeah, uh, it's, it's almost as though, I don't mean they're embarrassed by what they're talking about, but there's all that worry, there's that ridicule, there's that fear factor that's there when you've sh when you've shared something and uh, and I can't blame people for doing that you know I mean it's it's just the nature of the beast that there's plenty of people out there that just just want to it's like I don't know it's like a load of crows pecking around a bird of prey in it there's yeah. they, 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 they want to bring you down let's put it that way 
So a lot of people just prefer to stay in shadows. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's interesting then. So the Loch Ness picture then what came out recently, if you, if anybody wants to give their thoughts on that, that would be great in the chat. Yeah, that, that would be good. And, and, and I've no problem with these pictures from, from far range. That's the holiday camp. I think that's what they call it, isn't it? Uh, I've no problem with uh, anybody, uh, coming i can see two allisons down on bottom screen here people i know you guys can't but that's odd but i've no problem showing these pictures and uh, we'll see if we can get that organized remember we want questions from you guys tonight but let's just before that i'll nip it, i'll talk about uh, a guy who came up this week to spend some time with us dominic and he funnily we're talking about far grange <laughs> he, he was staying on that campsite yeah <laughs> that's where he was staying this week and uh, he's been up onto cliff tops with us twice, but primarily he wanted to come and tell me about his experience at Bempton in 2020, which he'd told me about before. I'd got it via email and I'd got it via phone call, but I wanted to speak to him face to face uh, because I find these these experiences that are kind of on the peripheral just as exciting if that exciting is the word just as interesting as say somebody saying i saw a ufo and i saw occupants of a ufo uh because there's there's something happening les this that's, that's mm. just as important it's you, do you know what i mean and uh he'd gone up there because he's interested in unexplained he'd gone up with his brother-in-law if, if i see him in chat he, he might be able to comment he might want to uh he'd gone up with his brother-in-law who's who's got a I, quite a highly professional job, so I don't have to say any more than that. And they've, they've took chairs up, as in just deck chairs, and they've sat on cliff tops in the night. And they've got a flask and all, all everything. And uh, they've got. He wrote down radio. He'd got he'd, uh, a wide band receiver. That's what yeah. I'm looking at there. And uh, at half past ten, approximately half past ten, he said that he, see, he saw looking down the the. the, the cliff top path a white light coming towards them tennis ball size and they're sat in darkness so he said it kind of echoes what i say i say well we we, we we ought to put a light on soon otherwise we're going to startle somebody in dark you know we're going to shock them and we're on edge at north sea here two to three hundred foot cliffs in that position so he said i stepped out from the stand where we were and i went onto the path and i think i'm about 50 yards away from this light and i put my light on and it went off just disappeared he said just as i put it on it went off he said now he didn't run down he says but i went down there's nothing there there's nobody there so that was the first weird experience and i'm thinking immediately we've got what the fishermen call the ghost of big railings where they see this tennis ball size light that they perceive as a headlight uh just move up moving up the path and when they go to investigate it disappears so that was that sometime after 12 about five past 12 uh, he gets a phone call from his friend and his friend's wife, and they put the phone on speakerphone. Uh, they want to know if they've seen or experienced anything, basically. And as he's talking, he walks up towards the RAF base on the cliff tops, not on not on private land. Right. Yeah. And as he, just as he approaches the RAF base, his mate becomes really animated and said, "Who's with you? Who's with you?" And he goes, "There's nobody." He said, "It weren't windy." And, you know, just in case, you know, because we know how the wind can distort sound and things. It's yeah, a sure. flat, yeah. calm night. He said, nobody, I'm on my own. He says, there's somebody talking. There's somebody talking. Mm -hmm. We can hear it. And his wife's at other ends getting animated. Uh, you know, really, they can hear it. They can hear this other voice. He said, it's in a different language, but or, but there's somebody talking. And he's, he's adamant. And obviously, Dominic's saying that I there's just me here and walk back down towards his brother-in-law. When he walked down, it stopped. Conversation carried on and he walked back up and it started again once they got near RAF base. So that what the end of that. What makes that part of the story interesting is that his friend is a sound technician who sets sets up sound systems for bands and and, and big events. So in his words, and we, we might get to speak to this guy as well. That's that's what I want to do if he will speak. He he couldn't work out why it were doing it and he'd never heard anything like it. So that was two experiences that he'd had they leave about half past three four in the morning walk back to the car rucksacks chairs all in back at car they sit in front of car and he said i turned to my brother-in-law and said that were an interesting night weren't it he says and 
boom, soon as I've said it, he said the wide band receiver, which is in rucksack in back, just bursts into life. It's full static, full full volume. He said it scared us to death. He said I've had it. I think he said he'd had it twelve years. He said it's never done it before, and it's a it's a deep button that you have to press to put it on. He said, we didn't even stop to turn it off. He said, we reversed, drove out. He says, and I stopped down Cliff Lane, got out of the car and turned it off. I'm just trying to find a name. It was a, 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 a Linko DJ, DJX3. If anybody's familiar with these things, you might know that it, he says it's really difficult to turn on. So is that is that some kind of, I don't know. Sounds uh, very paranormal, doesn't it? Yeah, it's fascinating. So that, that were... Dominic's experience condensed into about two or three minutes, but uh, it, it just shows the, the, the strangeness happening. And then today I've spoken to a lady. I, I, sorry, let me rephrase that. I've exchanged messages with a lady who was going to tell me about the time that she was up there with her husband and they heard the robotic voices. And uh, once again, up and around that area. And so... Honestly, there's no end to it. And I, this this part of the phenomena, if that's what it is, a phenomena, interests me just as much as somebody saying, I oh, was walking along cliff tops and I saw a landed UFO. Because I think there's there's as much going off there as what there is with the, the sort of, I don't know, the, the main ingredients. So, Les, have we got any... Uh, I see Nathaniel Gillis is in chat. Just one second, Les, before you start. Nathaniel, I've got a load of pictures of you, mate, which I've been promising to send you since Awakening. I will send them. <laughs> Give me a kick up backside tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so. Okay, so just uh, one question in uh, up, up to this moment in time. If anybody wants to send any more through, please do. Matthew Teal, out of curiosity, have you had much experience with electronic voice phenomena? Well, Matthew, obviously you'll have just heard that and probably that's what's prompted you to send the question. There's a lot of people experienced that in that particular area but i think people hear it and i once said in other areas where strange things occur in lots of other instances and uh, i've heard it i've heard it up on as, as i've said before on the fields when i was looking into animal fatalities and i've heard it in in the woods at, at the side of dane's dyke it's a similar area and once when i was i don't know i'd, I'd, I'd have only been about 20 21 and I was with Mary, my wife, and I've told this story before. I don't know the electronic voice phenomena or whatever, but we were in my mum's house and sat in front of an old gas fire, or maybe a new gas fire at that time. It'd be, it'd be old now. And uh, mum and dad decide they're going for a few beers, nine and a half past. And a lot, we'll, we'll not get too crude about things, but I just, when they'd gone, I said, are we going upstairs? And a voice, we sat like that in front of this fire, and a voice between us both, in not inside, not mind speak, it, it audibly heard just say, why? <laughs> and and, and I, I mean, she's never forgot it, I haven't. And it, 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 it was chilling, it, just one word, why? And, and I wrote about it in book, I call it the mighty why, because it was such a powerful word that, that stopped us in our tracks, should you say, but uh, there's lots of examples of this strange, uh, I don't know, disembodied, is it, uh, you know, invisible voice phenomena, uh, which is a terrifying concept if you think that some other intelligence could be around us at all times. Uh, so, yeah, I'd love to hear people's opinions on it, you know. That's, so That sounds really strange, that one. So, Lee Roscoe is asking the question, does uh, Paul and Les think that the cryptids Seeing in the dark. What do you think of uh, cryptid seeing in the dark? I should say. Well, I, I would imagine. I would imagine, and Are they got as good as our sight as cats <laughs> and owls. Well, everything's everything's kind of debatable because be, the, we've nobody's actually pinned down the, the the reality of these things. But you can guarantee the people who've experienced it would be shouting at the screen now, saying. I know that, that these things are real and we put our faith in our witnesses in Wolfland. So let's look at it. Let's let's jump. Let's jump to Rotherham lads in Wolfland. Whatever they saw had glowing eyes, self-illuminating eyes. I mean, that 
whether they whether some something with eyes like that can see in the dark, I don't know. Or, or some artifact of let's assume that these things are coming from some other sphere of existence. That might be, yeah. I don't know, the the effects of being in our atmosphere. That might be what happens. I, I don't know. Can they see well, in the dark? I would think so. If, if you apply the human man to it, I mean, we were in that forest. It was pitch black. If you put your hand in front of you without a torch, you couldn't see your hand. No. He... So if you assume that these these this creature, uh, what approached these uh, three lads in the woods, actually walks down that path, how far do you think he get without actually treading into the water without without a torch? So the, but... so in, going on just on that premise, they've got to be able to see in the dark. I would think so. Yeah. I mean. Uh... It, it's a terrifying concept, and there's branches and there's all sorts of all sharp sorts, bows stuck yeah. out everywhere. You wouldn't have light, eyes for long if it's you wondered how it goes. Yeah, trip hazards, isn't they? Tree trunks yeah. and everything. Yeah. But, but you see, we wouldn't be discussing it in in kind of paranormal, unexplained terms if if these things weren't different to everything else that we mm. encounter. Uh, yeah, I know when you put put a light on an owl on it on its eyes, I mean they really illuminate and come up. But these things were self illuminating. And so seeing in the dark, yeah, mm. I, would, I would think that there's a strong possibility uh, that, that these things can. Yeah, okay. So I've got a question from Matt Clinchy. Uh, has anyone seen a tall hooded figure? Oh, see, uh, well, I, I, that, not, in I've general, not. I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's one from, uh, and Mark gave told me about this uh, mark who came into a, a joint chat with us one night on here mark sturdy uh, and he'll probably be sat watching this but uh, he told me he used to work at sarah lee's which is the cake factory that used to be in bridlington at carnaby and there was one of their one of his workmates suddenly started going the other way around so let's assume his journey from west hill to sarah lee's on the carnaby, carnaby industrial estate on a push by it would take him 10 minutes it would take him 20 minutes going the other way around mm. he asked him why and uh he said well i'm never dr i'm never cycling that way again ever he says early morning he said well why he said because i'm i'm going along the road to carnaby the top road out of bridlington and it were near bessingby hall if, if anybody were mindful enough to google these locations he says in a hooded figure just kind of ghosted across in front of my bike while I'm while I'm sort of cycling and that put him off going there it frightened him to death so um, that might not fit in with what you're saying mark i mean there's the hooded figure that crossed the road with the small what what the witness thought were children at um, Fraysthorpe, and it were i think it were only about 2 years ago and so it so it at side at road and within an instant it crossed in from between two cars and had gone uh, Jessica, who does moderating for us, my daughter, uh, she was in a farmhouse, and I've told people this one before, uh, at Rudston, in bed, laid, a, laid in bed, woke up in the night, wooden chest at the bottom of the bed. She said there's two small hooded figures and a tall one. And she said there was a glass jar, conical-shaped jar with green liquid in it, which she said were glowing. And they were pouring either something out of it or into it. I can't remember, but the, as she's watching this and trying to wake her then boyfriend up and he wouldn't, he, he didn't wake up. She said one of the little figures looked at her, but she couldn't see her face, closed mm. her eyes, hoping that everything would be gone. And when she looked again, it's at side at bed and that was all she remembers. So the tall hooded figures, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't say that I've ever seen one. Not about uh, anyone else. So, do we have uh, right, Steve Lewis? Any more, any more info or sightings from the Humminbi? Uh, Humminbi guys, uh, we, we might be in luck, Steve. We might be in luck. A few weeks ago, uh, sorry, last week. I think well, last week, early last week. So it would have been Monday. I went. I went to the. Uh, no, it's Saturday morning. Last Saturday, not not the one just gone. I went to the post office. And just maybe post a couple of books or something. And who did I meet but one of the witnesses just going into the post office to exchange some, 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 he wanted some euros. They were off on holiday. And uh, we got talking and he said, because his son Dave's a really good friend of mine. He says, Dave said you wanted to talk to me again. And I said, yeah, I do. I said, I actually want to 
to f actually film you sat down telling us about this. It says, wait till I come back off holiday. We'll do it. So that uh, so we, we, we might get a little bit more info. We might get this more of the same, but as, as everybody knows who has ever heard me talk about it, I believe it's probably the UK's most incredible UFO sighting, not just because I've heard about it. It's got all the ingredients of something really special and multi-phenomena as well. Yeah, and I'll just say at this point, if you're new to the channel, please press the like and, more importantly, the subscribe button, and uh, you'll be informed of when we go live and any videos that come out. Uh, yeah, and that's great, Les. And, and once again, it, it's totally free. You're not committed to anything, but it just uh, gives us a bit of support. Thank you. Let's have a look then. We've got a question from uh, Lucy, Lucy P. When was the most recent sighting you've heard of of a black triangle craft? Do you know, Lucy, uh, if anybody, if we've got five minutes, uh, there it is. Uh, but this is October 2023, and I, I, I literally wrote it up today. Uh, and this is from a couple who'd, who'd been to the Goth Festival in Whitby. And instead of camping in their usual place, let me just, I'll, I'll do this. I'll, I'll, we're all right, aren't we? Have we got a lot of questions, Les? Uh, three or four. Well, this might take five minutes. So they, they, they camped on a remote part of the North Yorkshire Moors after the Goth Festival. Uh, they know it were October 2023. They, they camped on open moorland that surrounded the area, but they didn't intend camping in that place. In fact, they'd taken a wrong turn and they went through the village of Slights and on towards Beckhole and Gothland. Uh, interesting Gothland, isn't it? You know, mm. Gothland's very close to the locations where we've filmed a lot of Wolflands. Uh, early hours at morning and they saw a black triangular craft that rose up from the ground. So it were, land, it were a landed craft. I realise I'm sort of overdoing your answer, Lucy, but it's, it's in front of me. So, you know, we may as well do it. Uh, it to they told me that it were totally silent and it hovered for a few minutes at an estimated height of about 60 feet. Still haven't got a size off them yet. So I'm not going to say it was big as a football field and I'm not going to say it was as big as a minibus. I don't know. Um, then it just shot upwards uh, and adding that it stopped, it shot upwards and stopped and then it shot away at great speed and, and, and it were out of sight. Uh, the entire sequence of events, complete silence. Um, oh, they've said here, it was difficult to say how big it was because they'd got no reference points. Mm. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I will push them on that if I'm being truthful because if 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 we if we've got a distance of say 500 feet away you'll still have a, a rough idea how big it is if, if it's quarter of a mile away obviously you know it, it's, it gets a little bit more difficult it's had no visible markings so that tells me it's pretty going to be pretty close however the underside had three amber lights you know obviously one on each corner uh very close to area filingdales that's what i find fascinating so couple october 2023 witness a triangle lift up from the ground and it's very close to one of the most sensitive areas in the united kingdom um uh, being so near they quest they questioned whether it could have been military reasoning is they felt that it's such an important military base would have picked up the unknown on radar so it is it does make you wonder doesn't it yeah. however however they said that nothing else flew over after this sighting, because we've noted on walls, we've noted up on cliff tops. Sometimes, if you do have anything significant or you see something significant, five, ten minutes later, you've got jet activity. So, just an interesting one. And uh, <laughs> Lucy, yeah, uh, thank you. Okay, then uh, I've got a question from Carl Dan. Hi, Paul. When was the last missing person case reported at Bempton Cliffs? Oh. Uh, uh, we're go we're go we're going back a few years now. There have been some fatalities, Carl, but with the sort of suppression of n information now, you it lit I don't think it's any. I don't think there's any conspiracy or any mystery here. I think it probably applies to uh, missing people and fatalities all over UK. It just gets shut down. You don't find out nothing. I put freedom information requests in 
for for quite a few, and I, I'm I'm not getting anything back. And as you know, well, Carl probably knows. I think that you know it, it's it's a it's a sensitive subject. It's it's some research is treated as entertainment, and you'll see things go on YouTube. And I think all they're after is YouTube hits by saying sensationalized things and what have you. But, you, you know, I've said it loads and loads of times. You've got to just remember that this is somebody's son, somebody's mum. So, uh, you, you know, so it, it, even though they've gone missing in a place where things of an highly unusual nature take place, uh, and, and I do find it fascinating. I really do that something truly unexplained could be happening without lots and lots of proof or more bona fide proof. It, it's, diff it's a difficult subject to talk about. For me, anyway. Oh, yeah. I think uh, just to sort of like pick up on the lack of information that actually comes through. I mean, thousands of people, there's a few thousand people go missing in the UK every year. Mm. And majority of these people are found. But the cases where they don't find the people are probably in the, in the information that you're not getting, Paul. If you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. It, 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 and I'll tell you what's interesting, just little bits as well. When when putting the freedom information requests in, let's assume, and we'll just fictitiously make somebody goes missing and they live in, uh, I don't know, they live in Coventry. It'll be that police force that investigates it. Yeah. You would think it would be. I suppose they're working in, in, alongside Humberside Police, but primarily it's that police force that, that from the point of origin where the person lives who investigate it. Uh, I mean, that's probably the way they work. I'm, I've, I've got yeah. no knowledge of the workings of the have police. They, have they not got a central database column missing persons uh, database? Well, well, well oh, there, there are, and there used to be the yeah. Missing Persons Bureau as well. Yeah. And I know when I were looking into quite a few of these cases, I contacted them, because, and I th I'm not sure if it's closed now. It might not have. Yeah. And you, you type in missing people, North Yorkshire, East Yorkshire, whatever, and you'll have, or Yorkshire, and you'll have a checkerboard of paper, pictures of unfortunate people who, who vanished. And I contacted them and I said, don't you realise that, I, I don't know how many, they've got on this board. Let's assume they've got 25 on this board. And there's, I said, five of them have gone missing at Benton. Mm. <laughs> that's a big, yeah. that's, that's a, 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 it might not sound like a big number, but it is. And I, the answer I got back, and it, you know, and I spoke to people on the phone as well. Well, well, we only put where they lived. I said, mm. but you, you, we're missing a huge part of a puzzle here, and and let's assume that it's just something perfectly explainable in conventional terms. We still need to know, and we still need all ingredients in order to look into something properly. But uh, you know, I, and I thought to myself, I wonder, I wonder if police forces have actually realised they must do because they have all this cross pollination of data. But I don't know. Uh, just okay then. Uh, we'll move on. Right then, uh, Billy G W. Is the werewolf just feeding off our fear? Yeah, I would think so. And what a thing to say, Billy, the the werewolf. Uh, you, and I'm not I'm not knocking you for that. I say it. It, it just seems bizarre every time I say it. That that but people report seeing these things in in far greater numbers since we've started pushing out the fact that there's genuine, hundred percent honest, decent people who've, who've been unfortunate enough to see these things. But is it feeding off fear? I think so. Jumping back to Rotherham. The, the, the Rotherham guys, it watched them for hours and hours. And all that, that they exuded was fear. Uh, so there's a good chance it's feeding off fear. That might be why uh, it were more curious with with the gamekeeper because he's, he, he's, he doesn't sure feel like a lot of people would. And that might make him uh, more interesting. Do you know what I mean? Because... Uh, uh, and he told us one of the following nights he went specifically and set up under the trees hoping to see it come out whereas a lot of people might have just packed their bags up and yeah, gone almost certainly most people yeah no. yeah 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 that's i think so okay so, so um question for me actually i think alex thompson les do you have any strange experience you could tell us about we might not have heard before I can't actually, uh, I ain't had any more experiences that I've already told on this channel. And the two experiences what I've told on this channel are uh, when I was about eight, eight years of age, waking up and finding no no exit door to the room. 
and going into a blind panic. Uh, yeah. So whether that was just a, a boyhood nightmare that you get, who knows, probably. Uh, but the other one was strange, and uh, a lot of people experience this type of phenomena, is being laid in bed and somebody sitting on the edge of the, edge of the bed or sitting some part of the bed near your feet, and that bed actually went down, and I, I saw it and felt it. No, mm. I have talked about that before, but that's the only two experiences I can I can really uh, put out there. Well, there you go. I've, I've I've actually woke up at night and gone foot door, and it's not been there. But it's usually if I've had a few too many beers. I've, I've, it's that I've been, I've been feeling wall. I've, I've, I can I can see yeah. myself doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but that 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 bed that bed, uh, I was, I just went into cold shiver. You know, and I, mm. uh, yeah. Well, Who knows? There's, no, there's no accounting for it, Les. Yeah, okay, so. then. So we'll move on with that one. And uh, I see Steve question. Stockton's there. Uh, hi, Steve. And uh, Missing Persons Mysteries. Good oh, to yeah. see you. Brilliant channel. Uh, anybody yeah, it, it is a great seen, channel. Yeah. Anybody um, so Missing Persons is ex exactly what it says. And uh, yeah, does uh, Steve does a stellar job at. Uh, uh, finding all the information to do with and a lot of historical going back years and years and years. Uh, it does a stellar job. So visit his channel. Well, Steve, obviously you're there. Put a link to the channel and then people from chat can visit it. But wait till uh, you've finished here before you visit it. Uh, but no, go on then. So what we got here? Oh, yeah, this is the Alex. Yeah, Alex don't desert us now, yeah. Okay, so Steve Moore. Hi, folks. As Les a pick of the, of the Nessie. He mentioned, I've never seen that. I'm not sure if we can... can put it up, can we, Les? Is, the, is it copyright yeah, claim? Yeah, I could probably, I've got something here, actually. Okay. Probably yeah, somewhere. I, this, I have got it, yeah. Um, let's, mm. I'll, I'll put it up in a second. Uh, I don't know if you want to just uh, fill in with a chat while I just organise that. I didn't that want to, really. I thought you were going to put a picture um, up. But, uh... not, well, I had something else lined up, but I've got to well, now sort something else out. Let's see. Uh, so yes, yeah, we, we had that's, yeah. Uh, right reply. So just love another question up, Les. Well, with while you're looking for that, I think I might have it uh, now, Paul. So let's so, let's get that. Yeah, on. There we go. There we go. So that's what we're looking at. That was in, in the press recently, last couple of weeks. Who knows what that is? And there's no reference in that particular crop of that picture. Uh, I think there is a, a wider one out there. So, the, uh, um, well, I, I'm no going to no reference point in there. there. You know, it could be two rocks, couldn't it, protruding from water? But obviously, full respect to the person who's taking it because they might have a an incredible backstory, and I've never heard it, and I've not seen the pictures before, so I don't know. Okay, <sighs> so that's that's kind of what we're looking at there, Steve. Uh, but yeah, it should be all over. Uh, on the national press uh, the web pages. Okay. Okay, and uh, we'll move on then with. Uh, and and with I see Well Dragon Rising says looks like a few black bags floating around. And uh, well, <laughs> well, do, do you know? Yeah. Yeah, but and uh, you know, you make a good point, and I suppose <laughs> one one person's proof is never going to be enough for for another el another person. But yeah, you you make a good point, but I have no idea what it what it could be. Right. Big shooter, big shooter. Hi, Paul and Les. Have you ever ever had any reports from the Menwith Hill Air Base near Harrogate? Have you uh, had any call from that? No, I haven't. I haven't, uh, to be honest. A uh, little no. bit out your catchment area there, isn't it? Yeah, but, uh, but, but having said that, what you say, the shooter, is you've said it, and you watch coincidence, some, something will happen. I mean, I was just looking at this uh, Whitby Goth weekend uh, sighting of the Triangle, and I've got another one. You know, which, which I haven't got time to do tonight. And that is, as they came back from, we'll just touch on it briefly, as they came back from the Whit, Whitby Goth weekend, but not in 2023, 20, uh, this were in 2018, they decided to drive to Scarborough. Got to Scarborough, parked near Seawall, tides in, and basically they saw something beneath the surface. And as they were walking up and down Seawall, it were following them. We'll do it in more detail next week. Mm, and that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and there, that one is. I, I you know, it's, it's, I, I just sort of kind of wrote that one up. But anyway, yeah. Uh, thank you, Giorgio, for the monetary support tonight. Always helps the channel. 
and uh, thank you very much um let's have a look then uh oh okay uh lee roscoe rivington pike beast is asking question update on the new wolflands uh and the well, new wolflands yeah well, we've been we, uh, hacking away, what? hacking away. At it. Yeah, we, we have material already in the bag, already done, already filmed, and uh, it's just kind of getting things in some kind of order at the moment. But yeah, we, we'll yeah. be adding more. What we Paul? Yeah, we'll be adding more. I mean, there's a chance I might end up head off somewhere tomorrow, uh, you know, and do a little bit of filming. But uh, yeah, and, we've got new and, Lee, and Lee knows because he came on one of the shoots with us, didn't he? Uh, yeah, you did, Lee. What are you asking yeah. us for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you asking us, Philly? You already know uh, yeah, yeah, some of it. Yeah. And uh, th that were good, though. That, that was a good night. That yeah. we'll not go into too much detail, but we went into another another area in North Yorkshire, should we say, where where these witnesses had seen shadow type yeah. beings, and not just one or two men, a whole group of men all reporting and talking about seeing them. So that were interesting near burial mounds again. Yep, Stargazer Eternal. Paul, do you have night vision goggles for use at Bempton? Yes. Uh, and, and I take a thermal camera. I've got a psionics camera, which is, uh, you know, I sound a bit negative towards these cameras. It's it, And I shouldn't be. It can, it can see in the dark a lot better than most normal cameras couldn't. So that's a good low light camera. And I've got a thermal camera, uh, which, you know, that were quite expensive well over two thousand pounds and you're still limited by what you can see with that obviously you're going to get an heat signature and i actually did les and i think i sent you a picture i did when i took the little dog out in the early hours of the morning uh this i think it was this week but i i walked down through dane's dyke in the dark obviously uh do a little bit of yarning onto camera that would you know where we are you can hear birds singing and everything or the forest forest let me rephrase that. The woodland's starting to wake up. And yeah. when I get onto the beach, I look back and I'm very, very deep in the woodland, a long way away. And I've got it actually moving and standing up. There's somebody or something watching me. So, uh, yeah, you sent me a still through. Just Paul. one, I'll put, one I'll put grainy that on the, frame grab yeah. from the thermal. I'll put that on uh, now. Uh, and, yeah. and, and that's taken at about... I don't know, half four, five a.m. and uh, and that dark band in the bottom, in the it's lower, just... that's me. That's me. I'm stood on the beach looking up, uh, in, into the woods. So that's a long way away. So, if, so for anybody that thinks, oh, it must only be as big as a, I don't know, a, a rabbit. It's not. You you will see, when you see the footage because I've put it together as me and dog having one of our walks. You will see that this thing, and you'll see scale and context of, of what it is. So. When I arrived, my car was the only one in the car park. Now, I can't rule out that there weren't somebody in the woods because, let's face it, I were in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd just been in. But unusual because this weren't on a path. That was, if, if, if you could see it, if it had, if we could actually use uh, sort of bioluminescent eyes and see in the dark, you would, that's on, that's very deep that's into the say. woods. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Uh, you know. I've been looking forward to seeing the footage that you took, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's there. A plus, and I mean, I got footage, just a fleeting glimpse again of a badger. That's not we see them all the time. We see deer and seal, but uh, there's something around the lens in front of the lens that's a really big, glowing, strong heat signature. And uh, well, I've put it on, I, you know what I mean? I don't know what mm. it is. Uh, so that that were quite interesting. It's it's not me. It's it's far yeah. enough away. It's about six or seven foot away, which makes you. I always think about this unseen realm. It fascinates me the potential that if we can hear voices that just speak to us from from the the outer nowhere, what what are, what are they attached to? What are, what are they that we can't see? And that's that's more frightening, I think, than seeing something like that in woods. Or uh, to me, it is because it's the potential for what could be right next to you that, that's quite scary. <laughs> okay, a question from Welsh Dragon, Welsh Dragon Rising to me. If you could experience one type of phenomena, what would it be? Any type of phenomena. I'd welcome any type of phenomena to, for me to experience, whether it's just where what, bit, what Paul's just been talking about the voices or whether it's ghostly 
uh, apparitions or whether it's multiple lights i would say i haven't actually seen what paul's seen so yeah any of that i'd, 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 I'd be okay with mm, yeah well i'll tell you what the, the one of the most interesting things and I, I know lisa comes in in chat and lisa with her friend saw that that what do you call it that mirror three foot off the ground at Speeton and on the beach she'd gone for a walk and I've told this story before what looking for interesting rocks and fossils and got gone right to the base of where Speeton cliffs go vertical and start and then obviously you've just about ran out there unless you want to get cut off bit tight and start walking back sunny day and they see it it's a picture of tic tac on its end the uh, oval yeah, like and, yeah. and it's there and it's just hung about three foot off ground, three foot deep, 18, 12 to 18 inch wide. And they walk around it. They're looking at it. She says, I'm looking up the cliffs, thinking there's somebody with something reflecting. But it's not. It's a sunny day. It's not got any back to, to form a reflection off or anything. It's there. And we can walk around it. We're looking at it. That's wow. fascinating. What that, that is. Uh, yeah, it's an incredible one, that, you know. That would put a shiver down my spine if I'd have seen that. Yeah, uh, I see Paul Astor sent in. Hi, Paul. Thanks for doing the live stream with us on Thursday. I'm sure uh, everybody found uh, what Paul had to say interesting. Yeah, that was fascinating. Sure, that one. Uh, Jal, 1628, do you get many UFO reports that are associated with other phenomena? For example, poltergeist activity. Yeah, great question that, Jal, to be honest with you, because I, th I think in the past, and I, I, no particular researcher or group of researchers, but the, the UFO researchers of the past have concentrated on the UFO sighting or the, the occupants that were outside the UFO. But then the, there's this peripheral that, that interests me, this, 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 th these things that are taking place on on the sort of peripheral of the sighting, the poltergeist activity, that the residue that seems to linger after the sighting, does it ignite our awareness so that we're more open and susceptible to a, to experiencing it? I don't know, or is it just something that comes with it? Is it is it uh, is it just part of the phenomena, but it's not capitalised on, and it's important because sometimes a lot of the peripheral phenomena starts before the main event and you get a build-up, but people, I don't know, we disregard it or we don't look at it with as much importance and I think it's just as important. So, yeah, we do get a lot. I do, because I'm looking for it, Jal. That's, I'm asking the questions. Uh, so I won't, if I get a report and I manage to speak to somebody over the phone or face-to-face, -face, I want to know about the, the stuff that's happening on the peripheral before and after, if any. But usually there is. But yeah. as I say, in the past, I think they've concentrated on UFO event. That's and, right. You know, and, and I think if you look at a, a lot of uh, American research where they're looking for Sasquatch, Bigfoot, I think you'll find that uh, people are getting reports in where <coughs> people have seen associated lights before they mm -hmm. see this, if it is a phenomenon or, yeah, yeah. or a real uh, entity. Uh, but they have seen other things prior to this thing appearing. Which is yeah, th that's that's a prime example, and and a, and a an example of uh, researchers of the cryptids disregarding it, because if you've already made your mind up that this is some kind of fur covered creature that's evaded detection, you don't want to muddy your your waters by saying, oh, this incredible sighting this person had. But you know, they also said there were some spheres of light in forest as well. That don't fit with what I want to hear, so I'll just disregard that. It's wrong. It's, you know, it's, it's wrong. Let's just tell it as it is, no matter how ridiculous it might sound. L lay it out there as it is. Okay, then. I'm almost conscious of the time because we do have to finish it eight dead on. So we'll get this one on. This uh, from from Paul Askoff. Evening, gentlemen, and welcome, Paul. How many uh, reports do you get from the Flixton area? L loads, Paul. Absolutely loads. Uh, well, you know, when you, we're not talking like hundreds but when you look at that i look at it on the scale of the the size of the village it's tiny yeah and we get lots cool. of reports coming out of it uh so, so yeah i mean excuse me and unusual ones you know mm. and uh, 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 
guy driving home from work and uh, I'll not say his name I've, although I've actually got him on film he's, he's let me film him he drove he drove you know from Leeds with his wife to tell me about the experience and mm. that kind of tells you the credibility of somebody and he he'd stopped for some fuel drove set off driving back his wife back home sheep in a field that lead up onto Flixton Wold and the woods he said and it's something how he look, looked at it he said if you imagine something invisible taking hold of a fully grown you, he says, and it just went sideways into the woods. Mm. It just went sideways. So it didn't run in. It didn't sort of bounce sideways. It, he said it was just as though something had grabbed hold of it. He says, that, well, I couldn't see anything. And I just watched this sheep go sideways into the woods. Mm. So I know that's not Flixton werewolf type reports, but it's unusual. Just um, as fascinating. Yeah. And you may be able to fill in the blanks here for me. I think I remember you telling me that uh, people, yeah. you'd uh, an individual you'd spoken to in Flixton, knew of an old timer who lived in Flixton and had his own reports on uh, uh, dogmen, werewolf, or what have you. Yeah. And uh, it, it, this obviously, is... he died by the time you got told of. Uh, well, he, yeah, he, he died, and and. Uh, and Anybody from area, if you're a, a resident farmer, I don't expect there will be anybody listening, but somebody might at some point. He he lived on the cars in a farm. And once again, I felt like I have to do this every time I say the cars. It's C-A-R-R-S. It just means reeds and elder. It's just an old word. Yeah. And he lived on the Flixton cars. And he told this guy, who's now an old man, uh, about seeing the werewolf on the cars and he'd give him several reports of it this particular man himself had seen a hand nothing more he'd seen a hand believe it or not as he went along the, the drainage ditches and went to shut a gate he said a fur covered hand put it uh, breached his hand up put it on his and that's why he contacted me so this old farmer were called jimmy keith that's why i that's why i say in case yeah. anybody's ever listening because I know it don't mean out in grand scheme of things. I could have just made that name up, uh, but I haven't. So somebody will remember him. And uh, you, you don't just pluck people like that out of thin air that have sort of lived, I don't know, and seen this thing allegedly in 1930s, 40s and 50s. But an interesting one. <clears throat> yeah. So it just shows you that these stories do go back way, way back. As, I mean, the, uh, as was discussed in the film Wolfland. Without a doubt, yeah. And, you know, there is there is a book as well, uh, uh, like a ledger, a diary that uh, exists, and that's in the hands of somebody in Flixton that they used to have in the pub going out of Flixton near the roundabout, uh, which is oh, now, I think, it's, yeah. I think it's, it's, yeah. it's owned or run by a group of bikers. It's not a pub anymore, I don't think. Uh, I think they called the pub the Stirrup back in the day. And there's allegedly a lot of kind of and written reports and accounts of people seeing this thing. So fascinating. Janice Parry, uh, has there been any reports from Old Rome and nearing uh, neighbouring Lisset abandoned RAF building? Old uh, Rome. Uh, rep funnily enough, I get rep I, I, when I say I get reports, once again, I don't mean I get loads, but I've had reports of the same thing overlooking the sea at Old Rome anyway, of green lights. Four green lights. I remember somebody being in a caravan and saying that they'd seen the four green lights under the surface of the sea. Then one single green light sphere or round circular green light under the sea. And I, whoever's in chat, I know there's somebody in chat that knows about... Uh, Licit, uh, and I really do because I've, he's spoke to me about it. But uh, we might get him to come in and talk about it at some point. Uh, he's he's got a bit of information on uh, Licit and the the RAF area buildings. So I can't get any information on the abandoned RAF buildings, uh, Janice. No. Uh, here's a good question, actually, from uh, Jane B. Do you get fearful, and if so, how do you cope with your fears? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know. The other morning, when I when I got out of the car, walked down, walked down in the dark, uh, Jane, through Dane's Dyke, and I'm I'm happy. You know, I, there's, I'm not bothered. I'm quite comfortable. It's it's absolutely beautiful when when it starts to wake up the you know the woodland or the forest. I mean, Les has been in forest with us when we've done wolflands, so there's no fear. I tell you when you feel a bit unnerved when you look back and you realise there's somebody in them woods. 
do you know, I mean, they could have been looking. I'm, I'm not supposed to have had a thermal camera, and it might not have been a man. I don't know what it was, but there's somebody there, and the deep in woods, and from what I, from where I gauge it, they're actually halfway up the bank, and it's thick with sludge at this time. It is slippy as well. It's a strange one. So, do I get fearful? Yeah. Uh, do Do I go onto the cliff tops on my own in dark? <laughs> not as much as I used to do. There's a group of us go. Uh, have I felt fearful up there? When I was Steve Ashbridge, probably about five years ago, for some reason, just before midnight. Or just after, I can't remember exact time, again, Dane's Dyke, something just filled me with fear. And I said, we've got to go. Steve couldn't feel it. Don't know where it come from because we don't run around screaming or shouting. Very rarely are we putting torches on. It's not It's not some kind of, I don't know, most haunted ghost hunt when we go there. We're quite quiet. And, uh, we, you know, you take it seriously. But, yeah, I do get fearful. Okay. And a question from JJJJ. Have you considered yeah. their trail cameras for hotspots? Uh, yeah, we've put, we've put trail yeah. cameras in, in little bits of woodland where we know things have been happening. There's a There's been a few sightings and reports of strange things in the tunnel that goes under the road between, between both sides of Dane's Dyke. And you, people have seen me walk through it a few times. And Well, you have to bend over to walk through it. It's only about four foot and, and I'm four foot one. Uh, but no, I was saying you, you bend over, but uh, I've, I've put trail cams at the entrance of it, the back of it, and then come back next morning to to retrieve them. And so far, no luck. But but uh, yeah, we'll try yeah. anything. I mean, uh, well, that's it, isn't it? Uh, I wonder how much success in general people have with trail cams and, and capturing stuff for us. Always intrigued me because, you know, obviously lots and lots of people use them or do these... Uh, uh, an interesting one where uh, I saw Les Stroud, the survival yeah, man, yeah. and he, he'd set some food up in the tree in a trail cam, and the food disappears, and you don't see what's taken it. Uh, that that might be worth looking for. So you've got, so you must have obviously missing frames, missing yeah, he, recording yeah, he, time, haven't you? He, yeah. he can't work it out, and uh, it's it, it, that is interesting. It, you just mm. get the glimpse of the, what looks like the back of something, but it, fascinating. And look at the time, Les. It's uh, 1956 and we're not going deliberately people les does have to be somewhere uh yeah. and yes that's why we have to leave otherwise we you know we might have run on a little bit but we're all okay so no more no more questions there uh, paul and uh, uh, well yeah. question for paul have you seen any drawings of the cryptids that witnesses have done um uh, oh, I've, I've had a few drawings uh blue uh but it's not to me. It's not like when you ask somebody for a drawing of a UFO, because the UFO, these people don't have to be brilliant artists. If something's kind of egg shaped or cigar shaped, you've only got to draw that shape and you get an idea. But it's a difficult one if you're asking somebody to do some kind of detailed sketch of a, of something like that. I think they'd probably be better off or I would probably be better off as a researcher, as somebody questioning these people. I and mean, you make a good point there having a book of different examples, even if they're only black silhouettes, and said, what it shaped like that? What it like that? So you make a good point. There's a so, starting point to guard. Yeah, people, yeah. 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 No, that's brilliant. So on that note, then, it's just a bit of uh, uh, self-promotion here, Paul. Have you got a website? We have, yes. It's truthproof.uk, and uh, Don Lodge puts uh, UFO reports on and things, and I'll have to get some of these to him. Because if he's watching this, he'll be asking me why I haven't. Uh, and the books are available via truthproof.uk if you want the paperbacks, if you want the Kindle version of the books, it's on Amazon. And you can also get the Kindle, sorry, the Amazon Prime Wolflands DVD. That's there. Or if you want the ad copy, which is that one, visit truthproof.uk. And... I'm I'm pretty good when it comes to sending these things out. And if I got an order to tomorrow morning, today, tonight, don't have to order one by the way, but it'll be in the post tomorrow morning. And I'm same with books, and uh, that's yeah. how we're going to be. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you, Les. Thank you, Alison, and good night. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's good night from all all of us. And uh, as you say, thanks, Alison, for sending those questions through. Great chat tonight, and uh, great support. And uh, we're really, really welcome it, don't we, Paul? We do, yeah. Thank you. Okay, then. On that note, then, we'll see you all on Thursday. Bye.